Hey everyone, Kyle here, I hope you're doing well. I've been using iOS 18 off and on throughout its beta, but now that it's been fully released, I wanted to make this video and tell you about the 10 important settings that you should either turn on or change. First up is something iPhone users have been waiting a long time for. This is Rich Communication Services, or RCS for short. Enabling RCS will allow iPhones more support and features when messaging our Android friends, such as red receipts, set up custom group chats, and even sending higher quality photos and videos, just like iMessage. To enable this, just go into Settings, and then you can scroll all the way down to Apps, and then at the top here, you can just type in Messages, click into that, scroll down a little bit, and then right here, is RCS messaging. If your provider supports this, obviously you'll have this option and you can turn it on. And with this enabled, it should look something like this and your iPhone will finally play nice with Android phones. The next setting to switch on is the new charging limit feature, which helps reserve and extend the life of your iPhone. To turn this new feature on, go into settings and then into battery. And then underneath battery, click charging and then from here, you can see that there's a new charge limit slider right here. So I recommend sliding this down to 90% because it gives you almost the entire battery capacity while still preserving battery health. If you don't have this feature, you can always just activate the optimized battery charging setting right here to cap it at 80%. Next is Keep downloaded. This is a new feature in iOS 18 where you can now select files that stay on your iPhone locally and also on iCloud. This way, if you don't have an internet connection, you can still have access to that file. To do this, go into the Files app and then choose the file that you want to store locally. So this funny thumbnail right here of me, if we long press it, you can now see that we've got a new keep downloaded option. If you just click into that, and then it will save eventually, depending on your internet connection, and it will save this locally for offline access. This is definitely a great new feature to set up, especially if you travel a lot. Now, only if Apple would bring this function to Photos. Another big change is the integrated passwords manager app that's definitely worth setting up. So go into settings again and scroll down to apps, which I'm already there. And then of course you can just type in passwords, which is this one right here. Just make sure that these three toggles are switched on and these will ensure that strong passwords are being created for you. Um, you can come out of the home screen. If you want to find the new password app, it looks like this, these keys, or if you were in here, you can just click open passwords um, right here. So we'll open it, use face ID. It does require face ID to open the app. And this is uh, what it looks like. You can even tap this icon here. Um, you can add new ones. If you can go in this little shared groups option right here. This allows you to share logins and passwords with groups, friends, without actually revealing what the password itself is. There are a lot of password managers out there, but it's great to see a comprehensive password manager that is natively built in to iOS 18. While we're on the topic of security, the new privacy and security panel on iPhones has transformed. So go back into settings right here then scroll down to privacy and security. They'll open. And as you can see, this is a brand new format. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into it because it is some of my <laughs> privacy and security settings, but it's worth taking a look over this page to see what your iPhone exactly is tracking and to definitely turn off any unnecessary access. Going back out now for a minute, we have the home screen. So I'm sure you've seen this all over uh, the internet so far, the different ways you can change your home screen. If you click and hold, of course, this is how you update your different wallpapers. But going into 
this one here where you can customize it. And then you have all these different options. So of course you have the widgets, which were there before. Um, you have different text that you could do. Again, more widgets all over the place. You also have these lock screen buttons, which I guess we can count as feature number seven. So if you look at the lock screen, this used to be your flashlight and your camera. So now you can select from many, many different options. You can create shortcuts. You can add different, you know, controls. And of course, if you want to kind of like how I have, um, it's just kind of uh, blank and they, those aren't there anymore. So if I want to get to those, I pull up my control panel and then I have my flashlight here and then my camera here as well. So moving on to what I think is a pretty clutch feature, it's called motion cues. And this is designed to prevent motion sickness when you're using your iPhone in a car, which is super helpful to someone like me that gets motion sickness fairly easily. So go into settings and then scroll down to accessibility right here, and then tap on motion. And there's a new option called right here, vehicle motion cues. Tap into this, and then when it's switched on, um, as you can see, you get these little dots here. And what this does, it plays visual trickery, I would say, um, on your brain to offset the vehicle motion to help prevent car sickness. I like this to be set to automatic, so the inbuilt gyro detects when you're moving in a car. But it's also worth noting that you can add a shortcut to the new controls gallery, which of course leads us into our next feature. So now when you swipe down on the top right, like I did earlier, you get this new redesigned controls gallery and there's a lot more going on here and gives you well a lot more control. So if you tap this plus button up here, you can see that there's Plenty of new spots here where you can customize and add a bunch of controls. So let's click right here, add control. And then again, as you saw earlier, there are just so many different new controls that we can add into our control gallery. And to give you an example, let's tap search here and we'll type in motion cues. And you can see here, Vehicle motion cues, I'll just drop this. Well, we can go right there. I'll just drop this right in here. And now we can just you know, shift it to a spot that we want. Let's say right here. And then there we go. And now we have a shortcut to turn on those vehicle motion cues. I did um, mention the home screen earlier. I did want to, that was more the lock screen. I want to kind of bring up the home screen again. Um, on here, you could probably see that you've probably seen from this whole video. I don't have any labels on any of my apps. Um, they're not there. So this is because with the new edition of editing your home screen, you can hit edit and you can customize and you can have either small icons which show the label or you can have the larger ones, which I've kind of been liking. It has a little bit more of a cleaner look. Um, but you have that as an option on here to again add a little bit of personality or customization. Of course, you can choose light icons, dark icons. Automatic is what I have mine set to. So of course, during the daytime, they will be the light. And when it gets, when the sun goes down, it turns into dark. Or you can even do tinted and go crazy. So this is just like tinted white. So that actually looks pretty cool. Um, all your apps are now the same color. Or you can go back in and you can customize and tint it, and then you can just change what other color you want. Or if you like a color that is on your background, you can use the eyedropper and say you want this purple color right here. So mine kind of got a little buggy there, but um, let me go back in, customize, eyedropper, there we go. So now you can use the eyedropper and have it select what other color you want, whichever color you, what you want for your background. So that one looks great. So now all my icons 
go to that purplish color. So I'm gonna just put mine back on automatic, and then you can close that out. You can also, of course, edit, add widgets. You can customize the size. So instead of adding different size weather widgets or calendar widgets, you can just resize them and it'll automatically transform to the larger size. So finally, I think this is probably my favorite feature and I think it's really underrated. I don't see anyone really talking about this and I haven't really seen a lot of videos on this feature, but this is the create custom routes option, which is a new feature in maps. So if we open maps right here, um, again, this is definitely worth setting up or at least checking out. And it kind of is like a walking trail function, I guess you could say. So say we're in Central Park in New York City and we'll zoom in a little bit and say you just want to long press anywhere, which is right here in the park. And then if you just click the more button here and then create this new, create a, click this new, um, create a custom route button. If you do that, it kind of brings up this cool little animation. Um, and now you can just press any other points in the map like this. And then you can, you know, go around this way. Let's say you want to go over this way, all the way around the, the great lawn there. You can see all the different features. So, um, you can see the trail's length, you can see the elevation, and of course the estimated time to walk it. You can even choose to close a loop and it'll give you the full route or the full walking loop, or you can reverse the route. Um, and you can definitely, you know, you can save these for later and name it whatever you want. So the next time I'm in New York and I'm in Central Park, I can go on this route and I have everything downloaded offline and it gives me the all the cool stats about it. So that, that feature is definitely very cool and definitely underrated. So if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe for more content. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.